Mr. Mike, let's start with the big picture this morning. The Democrats seem to have this sort of uh, uh, broad brush strategy. Let's make America hate Donald Trump and hold him up as all that is wrong with our country for as long as we can. Not only the just failed impeachment trial, but now they're talking about uh, uh, going after him legally, criminally. What do you think their point is in doing that other than to this point, it seems like they might have a winner with that strategy? Well, that's that's the whole thing. It's all about political vengeance and political strategy. They, they believe that Donald Trump is their best boogeyman. So they're going to try to attach to him for as long as possible. They'll try to drag out all these investigations and inquisitions and all the rest uh, because they think there's political advantage to it. And it's a really sad abuse of their power, and it's an utter waste of the American people's precious time because uh, the last time I checked, guys, there's some pretty big problems facing the country right now that the Congress needs to be focusing on, and we can't as long as they engage in all these uh, distractions. You just said a phrase that jumped out at me, sad abuse of power, which I think is the perfect description for the for the Senate trial that just took place. What were your thoughts on that? Once again, in macro, then we can kind of narrow it down. Senator Kennedy said it better than anybody in the whole process. He said, look, the goal of impeachment is real clear. They're trying to equate the 75 million Trump voters in this country with all these the rioters and the extremists and the criminals who who ransacked the Capitol, period. That's what it was. So they used their majority power that they have in both houses to uh, engage in this in this political theater, and they drug the country through it, painful as it was, uh, for for as many days as they could possibly afford to do. And that's the point. They're trying to to to, to bury Donald Trump and make sure he can never get anywhere near a political race again in the future. And by extension, everyone who supported his policies and all the great successes and making America great again. That's what this is about. And, um, you know, they, they put it on pretty raw display. Without mentioning names, there were seven Republican senators that voted to convict former Cassidy. president. There were Cassidy. Aaron's got allergies. It's the snow. Sorry. There were seven uh, Republican senators that voted to convict former President Trump in a Senate trial where the chief justice of the Supreme Court, by his non appearance said this is all a sham can you sort of explain to us what you think they may have been thinking i wish i knew uh i think some of those folks you know they telegraphed in advance what their position would be you got romney and murkowski and people like that they they always uh were on the democrat side when it came to trump you know they, they loathed him and what he represented and, and by extension the people that he represented and, and so they, they had an opportunity to finally stick it to him, and, and they did. That was Romney's second time to do that, of course. Um, you know, what they missed, Robert, is really important. And what, what 44 U.S. senators voted on and agreed upon uh, by Rand Paul's uh, motion a few days prior to the trial was that the whole thing was unconstitutional. It, and it clearly was. You don't have to be a constitutional law attorney to just see the plain language of the Constitution. You know, I, I litigated those cases for 20 years before I got to Congress. Sometimes there's there's language in the Constitution that you can, uh, you know, you can dispute and argue about. You have to set new case law. This this one is real, real simple. I mean, it says in Article Two, Section Four, the president shall be removed from office on impeachment. There's no ambiguity there. I mean, shall is a is a very well understood term, and what it means is that was a condition precedent. In other words, the Senate never had any authority to do anything under the Constitution when it came to the case of impeaching a president, except for removing him from office. And the whole point was. Trump is now a private citizen. He lives in Florida. He's not the occupant of the White House anymore. And after he left, this was not an appropriate vehicle. If they want to go after him in criminal courts and, and the court of public opinion and all that, fine, they're going to. But impeachment was the wrong vehicle. And now they've opened a Pandora's box because now, as has been pointed out, oh, you can go after any previous office holder. So the base, the Republican base, is going to demand when we get the majority back that we go after Kamala Harris for comments she made or well, heck, why don't we go all the way back to Barack Obama? Why don't, why don't we impeach Bill Clinton again? You know, he did plenty of bad stuff, right? I mean, that's what this is. You know, the Pandora's box has been open. It's hard to close it after this has happened. 